Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, job, man. welcome well, to another episode good. of the Killer Collab Podcast. My name is Tony Depp from Florida, Tony D. To my right, we have Mr. Joe Davison. Oh, I'm second. Hi. Yes, you're last now. I have oh. moved into the second position. Soon I'll be where he is, and he'll be outside. Yeah, because neither of you can run the show. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And sitting across from me, Mr. Chris Lato. Howdy, everybody. What's that? How's everybody going? Could you have a sleepier? I know. Right? Like, I know. I'm, I'm very chill. Uh, you Sorry. would think you're the one that smokes weed. Yeah, I'm know, high right? as shit right now, and I have all this energy. I mean, it could be my nine-shot espresso. Yeah. I don't know why I shit my pants and fall asleep at noon. Uh huh. Good times. Good times. Sorry. Yeah, Chris. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah. What's I'm not up? doing anything. So we no. have a guest today. Oh, okay. I was yeah. wondering if you forgot your duty already. No. You know, what I'm comes with old age, you know, you tend to forget. I'm all over it. <laughs> <laughs> you said <laughs> you forgot your duty. What? It... He had one job. Yeah, <laughs> all right. But duty? Had one it's job. not a duty. What? It's not like a duty. Like a duty is like a... Well, he's old. We don't know if he duty. <laughs> that shot. Sometimes this show's like perfect. And then sometimes it's not. Oh, sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes, sometimes it's don't. in your mouth. Sure. What? Well, we have Gross. a guest today. Sorry. Um, joining us, it is. Uh, he's a filmmaker, actor. He is on the new, controversial but amazing, amazing series, show, Dahmer. Dahmer. Amazing. Good job, sir. The Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Green is joining us. Conjuring three, my favorite, by the way. Conjuring three. It is my favorite because of Paul and Eugenie and. And now Chris Green. Welcome, yeah, we've welcome, had, welcome. this is the third person we've had. Wow, we've had almost all of the Conjuring 3 people. We just need right. to get Patrick on the show. Yeah. And uh, Vera. Yeah. Chris. What's happening? Welcome to the show, bro. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What's going on with you, fellas? I like the uh, the, the shirt there, man. Is that cream? Yes, is that, that stuff? Yeah, yeah, I like it. I was like, yeah, man, thanks. I'm a little glad <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm changing. Well, I'm changing my look, man. I didn't want to come in all sloppy and t-shirts. And I almost like wore my week thing today, but we went with Ghost Rider. Yeah. Normally, I'm in something like that, and and the wife was like, "Listen, this is also video." She's like, "Can't it, look it like." It took a you a year to figure this out. Well, it took me a year to kind of take it seriously. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Have you watched the Wu Tang show, Chris? Yeah, um, actually, I worked with. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Um, so you know, I worked on uh, or occurred on Queen of the South the fourth season, yeah, and the gentleman that, that plays. Thank you, and the gentleman that plays Ryan O'Nan, uh, who plays King George, Ryan O'Nan. Uh, he's one of the writers on Wu Tang. Oh wow! So, oh, that's pretty dope. So yeah, so yeah, no definitely. Periods? Yeah, <laughs> get up on there, bro. Yeah, well, uh, you know, hey, listen, I try. I actually almost was on their first season. He actually wrote me in a part, and uh, producers changed. You know how it goes, yeah. man, Joe. The producers changed up stuff last minute, so uh, they wrote the part out. So that sucks, dude. But I just auditioned yesterday for a five-page audition for a 57-year-old man. Wow. And I'm like, I'm gonna do it though. But yeah, do it. yeah, yeah. Do it. I watch. I rec- I don't know how you. I took a – here's – here I'm up on an upswing right now. I'll tell you why. Uh, okay, I don't know how you auditioned, Chris, but I would mm-hmm. watch this. My auditions are usually uh, – I try to be um, as truthful as I can within the amount of time when you right. get the character, right? So right. whatever the character is, you know, uh, and you only have a little bit of time. You get the audition. They send it like 3 a.m. on a Tuesday – Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, you had eight hours, and you're like, no, dude, you sent it while everyone was sleeping. How does that even right. count? So right. you get it, you do your audition, but I watched this thing. Michael Keaton uh, was talking about when he started getting auditions, mm-hmm. when he started landing roles, and it was because he changed his attitude. And right. he didn't do the audition like he was trying, he was vying for the part. He mm-hmm. did the audition like he's going, that's his job. Right, right. That's his job. So my last four auditions I had, I did that. I went in going, nah, this is mine. No one's got it. I did right. it for a Toyota National, which I landed, by the way. I got nice. Toyota. Congrats. Right. Shoots on the 13. Nice. Fuck yeah, man. Nice. I get to play like a 1980s jogger dude who like <laughs> mistakes toyota for a marathon. <laughs> He's trying to lose weight. Yeah. Anyways, and then I just had a four-page big audition for this movie shooting in New Mexico. 
and mm-hmm. I kind of went in. I went in with the same attitude, man. So we'll right. see. We'll see if I start landing these roles because I changed. But my question is, how do you go? Because Dahmer, that's that's huge. That's bigger than Stranger Things, I think, at the moment because right. it's, it's it blew up. Right. Like Stranger Things is like a simmering. It was like yeah. a slow a burn constant. through an explosion. Now it's burning right. out. Dahmer's like, bam, here it is forever. Right. This is how it is. Right. Yeah. And it's a big right. role, man. You know, it's a big opportunity and amazing. Right. Congratulations. Brother. Right. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, same situation with, with Dahmer happened, man. You know, like you exactly what you were talking about. You know, I tell actors all the time, man. And. And my students, I'm like, you know, auditioning is your job. You know, they think getting the part is a job. It's like, no, right. you got to true audition, like, because that's what we do majority of the time. We don't. We're lucky to book. If you book two gigs in a year, you can consider, oh. you know, top tier. Yeah. You know? Oh, all right. Well, I should get yeah. a bump soon. Yeah. Oh yeah, you on a you on a hell of a run apparently. If you're on way, so like, yeah. you know, enjoy it, man. But um, and you know how it goes, ebb and flows, man. We don't. That's why yeah. so many of us wind up doing other stuff like directing or casting or whatever because right. it's you know we want to keep ourselves Copy, working always. But, Right, right. Yeah. But um, Dahmer was one of those situations where, you know, they they sent me uh, was six pages. Yeah. Same sort of situation. I got it from L.A. So my L.A. Uh, rep. So by the time he sent it to me, it was kind of about two o'clock in the morning our time. Yeah. You know, and he's like, yeah, I need this in the morning. I was like, all right. What do you mean? Cool. It is the morning. It's not. That's exactly. Now. It is the morning. Exactly. Um, so, you know. Just buckled down, man, went over it, and again, treated it like like a job, you know. Uh, and yeah. this is definitely out of character for me because, unfortunately, even though it's not out of the realm for me because, you know, I've been around, you know, a lot of my family, you know, very big in religion and going to church and stuff. I'm different. I'm more of a spiritual kind of guy, but I don't subscribe personally to, you know, specific organized religion per right. se. But I was able to talk to them and go, all right, cool, so – you know, this is what it is. And then obviously it being based on a, a true story, it helps out because then, you know, you have research material you can go find and, and go look for and whatever. And, um, you know, it's just about getting those pages down. And I was like, you know what, man, just going to go in and like you said, treat it like it's, I'm at work. I was day one on set. I'm just going to go in and do what yeah. I do. And went in, did that. And, you know, rest was history. Yeah, man. well, clearly you nailed it. Yeah, yeah, like, and it's so much harder on it's so much harder to do on tape when you have scenes like that, man. It's, it's a different thing when you got like you know those one pagers or two pagers or even one liners. It's like you know you go into your thing, you know, um, and and that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, cause yeah, you were on. If I'm not mistaken, you were on Stranger Things, right? Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah. and I and good work on that too. Cause I when I looked, I was like, I recognize him, and I had to go. And you know, that's the yeah. first thing you do is you go on IMDb, like, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah, I do that constantly. I like, I know her. I took an acting yeah. class with her ten years ago. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's and it's always How'd great. she make it? I right. hate her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get you get that jealous. Don't get it twisted. Any no, I, I don't, I don't get dude. jealous. Yeah. I try to flip that shit in for the win because I try to congratulate all of my 100%. friends for being successful. 100%. You know, uh all, you know, it, uh my friend Sarah French is on the show right now on uh Discovery Plus about mm-hmm. Robert the Doll. Right? Okay. She took a big role in that. She's in the flat have you watched it yet? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's amazing. I love that shit. Right. I love when my, uh, you know, all my friends make it up and they land a commercial. I and love they get it too, Another man. job. It's just like we were, me and my girlfriend were watching Dahmer, and you know, we got. I mean, you were only in the last episode, but you were like all over that episode. I mean, you had to right, finish like seventy five percent of it. Right. And we're sitting there watching, and we get to episode ten, and I'm like, "Hey, that's Chris Green." Right. Right. And then. You know, you feel like you're just going to see you for a little bit, but then, like, you were in the whole episode, and I was like, that's a right. pretty amazing role that he just landed. Right, right. This, yeah, and, and and honestly, man, one, it like, was – the best part about doing that role was the the interactions or the, or, the, or the actors I got to work with. I mean, you know, at, and, and one – because I was there, unfortunately, you know, we filmed that during COVID. Uh, yeah. We were on location at an actual prison, which – wasn't decommissioned by the way that prison parts of it was still active wow. but they obviously separated us from from everybody else but um you know in a week to sit there and interact with the likes of richard jenkins and molly shannon and then turn around and have to do that scene with evan yeah. it was like you yeah. you couldn't ask for better scene partners because at the time i mean evan was already we found out on set he got nominated for the emmy he wound up winning for mayor of east town with kate winslet but we found out he was going to get his nomination while we were filming 
So, of course, everybody leaves that alone because, you know, we're there to focus on work. But on the inside, you're like, man, I hope this dude wins because, you know, my yeah, all, the, the meat of my stuff is with him. So I'm like, I cool. And he's definitely probably going to get a nomination for this, too. So, that's how, that's how um, I feel. You know. You know? Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. You got to take those, my, take those wins. My, my effects artist, Marcel Banks, who just did my movie I shot out in L.A., he just nice. won an Emmy for effects. Nice. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, keep winning, people. Right, so right, Someone right. else get an Oscar. Come on. Right. I ain't gonna be right, me. Right. You get one because I'm attached that shit to my movie. Exactly. You know? And that's and that's that's yeah. what it is, man. It's by you guys know. It's by it's by association. So that's why I was saying earlier. Um, you know, when actors say, oh, you know, I'm, you know, it's it's one thing. A lot of actors are going to be happy and congratulate their their fellow peers and. I tell people it's nothing wrong with being jealous because if you spin it, like you said, Joe, it's like motivation. Like, oh, man, if they can do it, I can do it. It's yeah. when you become envious. That's the problem. I, I'm it's like, kind of like uh, uh, you, you know, uh, my my um, battle partner, I call is Austin Janowski because he right. and I go against the same kind of rules. Right, constantly. right. You know what I mean? And I'll call him up and be like, yo, I just got an audition for Disney movie, uh, blah, blah, blah. Did you get that? He's like, yeah, I got it. Who'd you get? Oh, Dr. Phelps? Yeah, me too. Fuck you. All right, I'm going to be better than you. And then we, like, hang up, and then right. we'll send each other the auditions, and we're like, oh, why the fuck didn't I do that? Right, you right, know? right. So it's it's a fun little camaraderie because I hope that it builds, and in fucking 15 years from now, we're both getting a fucking Emmy or a, right. just an award. Competition or, just makes you, you know, better, Or we're both, you know, yeah. I got to work drive through and he's on the fry. Whatever the fuck. Right. You right. know what I mean? And we make it right. or we don't, you know? right. Right. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. how it's how it works, man. And then you and you see, you know, when you work with cats, like you know, just you know, on our downtime, you know, I was talking to to Richard Jenkins, and I'm like, you're sitting there, and obviously the the the, the actor part of you is respecting the fact that you know this is your coworker, which is great. You know, it, it's it's a good look on you. But then the the artist part of you is just like, man, I've seen this dude work. Yeah. For yeah. You know what I mean? So you know, you have that downtime and. And you talk to him, man, and it's it's crazy he's sitting there. He's like, you know, you gotta enjoy doing this shit, man. He's such the coolest guy, man. He's like, you gotta enjoy doing this shit. He's like, I'm seven, in my seventies. He was like, if I had to walk around with an ego, like, oh, I'm nominated for this, blah blah. He's like, I'd have a heart attack. He said, man, come to work, enjoy doing work. You're gonna run into assholes here and there. Let them slide. You know, as long as you yeah. come in and do the work, man, the right people will recognize it and you'll start working. Because he was talking about how he's been in this industry so long, but over the last decade is when everybody's like. Richard Jenkins, Richard Jenkins. He's like, man, the people knew how long I've been doing this damn thing. And all of a sudden, now you guys are knowing who I am. He's like, I have those fans that recognize me for early career, but as far as like on a recognizable, notable scale. Step Brothers, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. It's just like, oh, but I, you know, I, I, I've been watching since I was a kid. Right. You know, you're like, oh, that's the dude I watch. Guys. So I learned right, that right. Is, that but, you know, it's different, I think, with us as, as artists. We recognize that. But he's talking about like the general populace to where. And, yeah. and, you know, your team feeds on that because now he doesn't, you know, he doesn't audition anymore. He hasn't, you know, no, for a while, you know, I mean, step, even with Step Brothers, he was like, yeah, I was still getting asked to audition. And I'm sitting here like, are these people lost their damn mind? And he goes, but you got to understand when you get to certain filmmakers or certain associations, then it becomes, yo, you're taking this meeting because you don't audition. You're too good for that now. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's always that's always the goal, man. Like for me. The longer you do it, and I don't know how you guys feel about it, but the longer you do it, you you start to stray away from, you know, the famous aspect because you see the bullshit those people go through, and it's just like, man, let me just do my work, get my recognition for it, cool, and then go back to being able to go right. to oh, LA right. Fitness or Target, and people right. they might recognize you, like, cool, but that idea of you having to send an assistant to go get some damn shaving cream or something, like, I don't ever nah, that. Nah, I'm cool with that. No man, because I won't ever have money like that. Because as soon as I get millions, I'll be making another movie with the exactly. money I just made. So right. you know, right. my daughter right. will be like, "I'm waiting what about on us? money for college." And I'll be like, <laughs> "I'm making a movie." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this will pay for college. Right, right. right. Said, exactly. The hell with college. You want you want your education? Come to set. You can yeah, ask somebody exactly. who went to college. Exactly. Right. So they got you... YouTube. I've been trying to ask this question for like ten minutes. Go ahead, You're man. So Step dramatic. Up. So, <laughs> you're gonna, get, gonna like, come on. I know he's not an actor. Oh, God. Right. Yeah, that's why I like trying to talk to actors. Yeah. Try to right. see what, right. what it feels Which I'm like. digging the shirt too, there, Chris. I like that. Uh, I hope they actually make a decent. Nothing against Nicholas Cage, but I hope they make a decent. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. I liked him. I just didn't like. Him. Well, part two was. I love Nicholas Cage. Awful. Yeah. The first one was good. Yeah. I like. Ask your question. Right. Anyway, so the scene you were in um, when you were interviewing. 
Dahmer. Is that like really eerie? Because I know how actors immerse themselves into mm-hmm. roles. So, you know, you're thinking I'm sitting here interviewing Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm-hmm. Is that like play on you? Like in your psyche? Yeah, you're like, still having nightmares basically. Right. Oh, no, nah, no. Nah. But the, I mean, Evan, I'll say this, you know, Evan is the type of guy that fully commits. And let me be clear. Because this whole narrative of what the general populace thinks method acting is, I hate when I see articles on that shit. Um, it wasn't method acting what he was doing. You know, when you're playing somebody like Dahmer, you don't have time to in between takes bullshit and laugh and ha ha. Nah, this is like you got to fully commit to if you want it to work, you got to fully commit to that character. Because it's not like it's a made up character. It's not like it's American right. Horror Story stuff. This is a dude that really existed that really did this stuff. So, you know, he was very big on, like, when you would see him in the morning, hey, how you doing? What's up, Evan? All right, cool, great. All right, I'll see you on set. And then you didn't see him until it was time to work with him. He stayed very much in his in his trailer. But as you can see, Dahmer wasn't the type. Dahmer went and got these people. And granted, yes, they take creative license. We don't know what really happened because, unfortunately, the people that we can talk to about this are no longer here. So, you know, and it's like those victims, and obviously you're not going to know exactly what happened. But from what they could piece together, he was the type of guy that would go get his victim, go back to his place, and it would just be them. You know, he, he really, outside of his family, he really didn't go and, you know, mingle with people. So Evan kind of tried to keep that. But when he, the first day I saw him, you know, in full makeup, because his hair, obviously he dyed his hair. So, you know, he kept that. But in full makeup, yeah, it threw me off because I was like, damn, he wow, his resemblance to Dahmer is like, hair and makeup did a damn good job, man. I was like, that's a little yeah. that's a little creepy, but when you sit down and you realize you didn't tell a story and you get into it, um, you know, that, it was more the character kind of being uh, freaked out, because my character isn't, uh, it's it's a culmination of, uh, from what I was told, it's a culmination of two chaplains that he dealt with, two black chaplains that he dealt with in prison, so it wasn't just one. And I don't know if they kind of wanted to be disassociated, like didn't want right. you know the whole thing to come back. I don't, I don't know. You know, I wasn't on uh, obviously the producing team, but I was told it's like no, these people, it's you're just kind of a blending of you're two amalgamation of, of two people. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you gotta kind of knock that out. And I worked on it with you know my mentor out in LA and my coach out in LA. And the one thing that we kept harping on was, you know, it's an internal. So it's an internal struggle, which was very important with the director, Bar- Paris Barclay. He was like, you know, I want to see your thoughts, man, because here you are, you know, you're a chaplain, you know, you're a man of God, you know, you've got the collar on, you, you wear, that's your job is to bring people to God, you know, is to, you know, you don't judge. That's not your job. You know, you want these people, they want to repent. Cool. But the other part, you can't deny you're a black man. And this guy sitting across from you, if you didn't have that damn collar on, you'd probably be one of his victims. So that's, you're a human being at the end of the day, but you're also a human being that's devoted his life to bringing people to God. So it's like, you got to have that reservation, but you also got to be like, you know, everybody can be saved regardless of how bad their sins are. Everybody has the opportunity. And he came to me. It wasn't like I had to go to him and beg him. Like he's the one that came and said, yo, I need to, you know, now I realize where I've messed up. I need to, I need to fix this. Um, so that scene was very interesting and it was cool. I love the rehearsal process for that because Paris, you know, normally when you get on the show, man, and, and Joe obviously will test to this, when you get on these type of shows, especially when they're bigger shows or bigger producers, you don't get rehearsal time. You come in, your rehearsal is your blocking. You come in, they block you, you that's your that. rehearsal. Yeah, and you're done. Paris, yeah. because that scene was so important, we came in and we blocked and then he made all the crew, with the exception of him, the writer, the DP, and the AD, leave. And then he let us rehearse. And I was like, this is dope because now we yeah. get to pick the little nuances and stuff. And Evan was totally cool. You know, when you have some number ones on the call sheet, they'll, oh, I'm done. Let my stand in, come in. And, you know, especially if you're just guest starring or co-starring, like, yeah. you know, I was lucky enough to guest star. Right. But they'll leave. Evan was like, no, nah, I need to be here. Like, so they were trying to put his, you know, second team in. And Evan was like, no, it's OK, guys. I'm, I'm here to work. That's what I'm here right. to do. So he'll always have my respect for that because a lot of actors in his position don't do that. So, yeah, unfortunately, it sucks. But, I mean, to me, it's like I get it, you know, if you have – if you're a producer on the show as well, which he was, and you have other stuff to do. But, you dude, know, I when you're trying to tell – I could get David Harbour to shake my hand. Wow. He wouldn't even shake my hand, dude. 
Wow. That's crazy because when I see interviews, and that's that's why I tell people you can't judge off of these press interviews because yeah. you're still acting. Yeah. You still got to go in and put on face for the show. And I would have never guessed that he would be like that from, you know, at least the interviews that I've seen. Because I'm like, damn, he seems like he's down for the, like, the craft, the art. Right. He loves artists. And to have that, it's just kind of like, man. And I'm that, not the only that one. Sucks. That sucks. Yeah, well, well. yeah, that's horrible, man. That's yeah, horrible. I was I was fortunate on this. Everybody was cool, man. Richard what Jenkins, I like I said, is cool. Is I want to know the moment, what it felt like when, did you get an email or did you get a phone call when you got the wrong? Um, my agent always calls me. Yeah. So okay. that's the thing. But but this was the weird part. So you know the bad thing about that is you know on a show like this because they filmed outside of the the, the TMZ. You know. So I mean, Joe, obviously you're familiar with. LA. I'm sure you guys are too. But we filmed in Lancaster, which if you know anything about LA, that's like an hour and a half without traffic from LA. Yeah. So they were steadfast on yo, you got to be an LA local because we can't put people up. You know, we can't be flying people in and putting them up for this series because we're also obviously doing COVID testing. Because yeah. again, we were in the, we were shooting this, we were in the, still the the hype, the crazy hype of you know shield and mask and yeah. testing twice a day and all that. We were doing all that, so we had to do the okie doke, right? We had to tell producers, which they knew after I got on set, but at that point they didn't care because they were like, "Yo, your tape was great." But um, we had to tell them, "Yeah, yeah, he's LA local. Yeah, that's cool." Which I you know, I can be because I've got family out there, I've got friends out there. That's not a problem. I hop on plane, especially for something like this. Crash on you know? the couch or fucking yeah. Yeah. Sleep right, right, right. Um, so my agent called me and he was like, "So um, they're pinning you right now." He's like, "But it really sounds like they're interested." I said, "All right, cool. I'll just go ahead and fly. We have shoot dates." He's like, "That's the problem. Somebody on set, you know, um, they got the positive COVID test, so they've got a." They got to chill for a minute. And he's like, I don't want to tell you to come out now because that that person, they won't release who the person was. But if they're not a key crew member or key actor, they'll have them. You know, if they're a day player, they have them leave and then they go on with the shoot. So he called me and he was like, yeah, you know, um, I don't want to tell you to come out. And then you're out here for three weeks before you even test the film. Yeah. I was just like, damn it, man. And I just pulled the trigger. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go. And, you know, if, if I'm out there for a minute, I'm out there for a minute. And then he literally called me the next day. He's like, he called me. This was a Tuesday. He called me on Wednesday. He's like, they need you to test Thursday because you start Friday. Oh, he's, like, oh, he's like, please tell me wow. you're already. And when he called me on Tuesday, I was like, dude, I, I'm going to be there Wednesday night. It's cool. Like tonight. It's yeah. going to be cool. Your time. So it's going to be cool. So it, it worked out, man. But um, normally he'll call me and be like, hey, you booked to get on the way. But it was a weird, like, he's like, I think you got it. But I don't know because they're still... And I was like, all right, man. So that was the craziness of, of, of COVID. But yeah, that that that's always a good feeling, man. And you know, it's like somebody calls you and tells you, you know, hey, your tape was good enough out of all these hundreds of actors or thousands of actors that auditioned for it. You know, it's the best feeling in the world, man. That happened with me with This Is Us. You know that show? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was supposed to be the lead in that. It was down to me and that dude who was also on Stranger Things, season one. Right. I didn't get it. He got the role. And half is, and, and, and it gets so too. close. Yeah, but they called my agent and was like, look, he's it's between him and this other dude. Uh, we're going to pin him right now. They wanted to, like, block out my dates and shit. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't get it. Hmm. And that's, and you know what? Sometimes I'd rather not know, man. I've had so many of those in my career, yeah. too, man. And I'm just like. Uh, you know, the, the one that hurt the most, which I, I knew a lot of people didn't know, I knew it was going to be a big hit. Um, the, the, the black dude on, um, Handmaid's Tale, and he's a good actor, same situation that plays a little, a little bit more, uh, yeah. significant other, My wife knows um, it. and he's been on every season. Like yeah, when I got that audition, um, because I know Bialy and Associates, they, they cast and, you know, I developed a good relationship with Sharon Bialy and she sent it to me and she was like, look. I'm gonna fight for you for this role because I think you can get it. She's like, but you know, you got you got to bring it because they're looking at some heavy hitters. And she called me back, same thing. She was like, hey, so uh, I need your dates for this. We're gonna pin you. She said it literally is you and one other actor. And then I had to do uh, like a um, uh, another like a Zoom. It was kind of Zoom, but it wasn't Zoom. It was like a, I don't know what they the other program they used. But I had to do a session with the director online. Did that. 
she because she's like hey he loved you everything was cool i was like all right great man this this is it this is the series reg this is gonna be this is gonna be the one yeah and she literally called me like the week of filming and was like yeah it came down to you know they decided to go with the other guy and part of me was like i would have rather you just not told me like as i would have got the hint like the day before filming when i didn't get wardrobe any down like all right, right. Yeah, obviously i didn't yeah. get it so is it worse but, to be second or like 150th say what is it worse to like be second or 150th well to my opinion it's, it's worse to be second by far yeah, yeah well i mean yeah. you know ricky bobby said it best man if you ain't first you're last right so right. Well, that's the only right. two positions really nobody Nobody remembers that. Like nobody, if yeah. you ask anybody in any, any any type of major, you know, sporting event, you know, it, it, they have to struggle to figure out who the loser was in the championship, right. unless it was their team. Like if you ask somebody, even if like somebody never followed basketball and it was just like, oh, who won the championship? Oh, I think the Lakers won last year. All right, cool. Well, who they play? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you're not the, if you're not the king or you know the champ, yeah. you're not. Nobody cares. You know, it's like they want you know, you know, second place is first place loser. Yeah. So. Absolutely. That's what I was yeah. yeah. First, second place is the first loser. Yeah. Basically. So what what's next on your on your plate? Uh, just hitting the grind. Uh, auditioning, man. I think I want to. You know, I, I directed a few shorts. You know. Um, your phone should so. be ringing off the hook, sir. Is it not? I hope so, man. I hope so, man. I got, um, you know, I got a new manager. So, uh, out of LA which, or Atlanta? Yeah, LA, LA. Where do you live? Uh, um, I'm in Atlanta. I'm back and forth between Atlanta and Orlando, man. My daughter's in Orlando. So, okay. um, I didn't want to go West she's Coast safe? because she's she still... okay from the hurricane. Yeah, she's good. I'm actually, that's where I'm at now. I'm actually in Orlando because once oh, I found out, you know, they were going to get hit, I was like, all right, let me stay, you yeah. know, and, and be straight, you know, and see, make sure everything's good. And luckily, I mean, parts of Orlando got tore up, man, where she is. She was actually, excuse me, pretty lucky. But, you know, um, 10 miles in any direction from her, man, it was, you know, yeah, I mean, here, there's dude, still places that are out without I'm, power. I'm so. so happy that it shifted and went, I'm not sorry for everyone else. Right. That it shifted and it went lower because if it come in Tampa Bay, Tampa be gone. Oh, man. Tampa yeah. be gone. Over, over. And it and did it like the Pete night before. Seminole where we live right and it did it like the night before man i was looking going back at it because they they were telling people straight up like yeah, this is about to be right here right through yeah 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 they were like this is about to be like i heard some people just you know on social media obviously that have lived here do do like you know charlie and whatnot and they were like man it ain't gonna be as bad as charlie but we we about to get hurt pretty bad yeah. man the way this is going it's actually and it worse than charlie it. i think yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, when it hit land it was category four and yeah. if, right if we got hit up here, it would probably would have been close to the five because it would have had more time in the water, warm water right. to get to us. So yeah, it only needed right. to go two miles an hour more. Yeah, to be a category right. five. Yeah, that's right. Like it would and, have been devastating. And just like you, like you said, man, just you know, it sucks for everybody else. Cause I actually know people who you know, live down in like Naples and Fort Myers, man, and they're, Me I mean, too. they're alive, but man, it's their home is yeah. like they have no home. <laughs> good friend of mine, an actor, Kevin Waldo, his family, their house got flooded, man, flooded to yes. the roof. Right. All, they said they came home with all their furniture was out in the yard. Right. Somehow it like got out of the house. Right. Because of the water flow, probably. Yeah. I guess, I don't know. Yeah. Did you it's, see that tough, Challenger dude. that got flipped over? <laughs> it's like a 1969 Challenger. Yeah. Uh, got pulled out of a garage and flipped over. It's in the dude's driveway. Oh man, I think I saw the only thing I saw was out in Tampa. Well, um. You know, I think they said it was Bayshore area or whatever, because that got hit, you know, pretty hard. But there was a guy that had just bought a brand new McLaren. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Oh, yeah. And, and I was wait. like, dude. You bought it like a week before? Oh, man. Why would you not drive that the fuck out? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Yo, there's a hurricane <laughs> coming. Right, right. I would have been in New Jersey. Out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like literally, and and the thing was, he was like, I guess they thought because it was in the garage. Was, I'm like, bro, no, man, no, no. you should have got that shit on a truck, a trailer, or something, nope. and got it the hell out of Dodge. Man. <laughs> Not a um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, you know, hitting the ground running, man. I've got a few other things in in the fire, and uh, you know, my manager's trying to do some other stuff. Um, you know, I'm still. 
still teaching and, and helping my, my students out, man, which I'm really excited about because they're having, my students are having a hell of a year too, man. Uh, my students are doing really well with like booking stuff and, and big stuff at that, man. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. But, you know, I kind of just, after, after Dahmer, that, that kind of made me realize, you know, the type of stuff that, you know, you, you're like, all right, cool. Like this show, if it's hot, I'll jump on it. But I'm like, nah, I gotta, that was creatively fulfilling. Yeah. to work on that. You know what I mean? And and you get to a point where it's like, yes, money-wise, I got to pay my bills, but you know, I want to be happy with work. Because yeah, you could work on some of these major shows and, and get that kind of recognition. Like, I'm sure with Stranger Things, like I would love to work on Stranger Things, but if it's if it's not in a capacity that's going to make me happy, it's like... Yeah, I didn't get any influence. I couldn't say... I wanted to say, there's a scene when the, we turn the power back on and it goes from red to green. Right. And... Ross Duffer was walking by, and I said, yo, can I say light is green, trap is clean? Because it was right. supposed to be 1984. Right. Right? And Ghostbusters was out. The kids were dressing right. as Ghostbusters for Halloween. Right. <laughs> they just stared at me. They were like... I was wow. like, so is that a no? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, right. I, like, I don't know. Like, So, you know, I didn't do anything... I didn't really yeah. improv, and then they had a part where I, I'm in this console. There's this giant console in front of me, and they come in. They're like, "Okay, we're gonna start here, and we just want you to turn this off." <laughs> and then they walked away, and I said, "Okay." So the first <laughs> take, I was like, "Right, like that." <laughs> they're like, "Okay, we're gonna do it again." And I was like, "Okay, we're gonna do it again, not like, not that. like that." <laughs> right. Man, and in the show, it's just this. Click. I was like, man, I had a whole sequence set up and shit. Like, I said, I wouldn't he know that, it? Bro. Wouldn't he know his console? Like, he would know exactly. exactly how it works, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I tell people, I'm like, you know, the joy, the, the plus on being on a show like that is strictly for the fan base or the social media following. That's the only benefit. You're real. Because, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, because a co-star role like that is a real grab. You're basically a talking prop, right. pretty much. On, yeah. on a show like that, if that, I yeah. barely talk. Yeah, it's like that's yeah. it, that's it, and it yeah. sucks, man. I tell people, I'm like, you know, it's. I think that's why you're starting to see, and I'm sure you guys have seen that. You're starting to see a lot of these actors who you may recognize and respect as far as their work. If you notice, you're starting to see them do a lot more of the the middle tier, lower budgeted streaming stuff because they have say in like my characters. I want to do this and I want to do that, and they yeah. even get so much as a producer credit, but like. There's more collaboration on those sets. It's like these hundred million dollar movies, unless you're, you know, above the line on that, man. You come in, say your line, shut up, and get out of here. You know, that's well, pretty much what. Here's the thing, man. I was talking to Paul Reiser, and he's like, I wouldn't even be doing this show, but my son said it's awesome. Wow. His See? son's like 15. So he goes, uh, he goes, there's a bunch of shows he watches, and I wasn't even aware that streaming had shows. He's like, wow. I watch that. And I was like, I was like, wow, man. He goes, he goes, yeah, this is where I'm gonna live from now on. He goes, it's just like TV. And he's not lying, dude. Paul Reiser's on everything. He's on yeah. the Boys. He's on that new show now. Uh, whatever that new show is, he's on. Do you <laughs> like working bigger stuff or, or smaller stuff? <laughs> It's a two-handed question. Money, man. money like, out of the situation. Okay, I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> that's that's the main difference is is you getting yeah, a fatter money. paycheck, you know, and the residuals are better. But um, I gotta say, all the stuff that I've been happy with, creative wise, and enjoyed, uh, has to be, you know, the smaller or the mid-tier stuff. This this production, you know, Dahmer is probably the one of the only ones I could say that is like bigger tiered. And, and budgeted because it's Netflix and it's Ryan Murphy. So yeah. Um, Let's talk about Conjuring Three. What was that like? How many Conjuring, but see, that's that? the thing about Conjuring was even though you know same production team, we had a different you know Michael Chavez was a different direct like a newer director. Yeah. James didn't come back and all that. Um, so they were kind of mid tier too, man, because we shot a lot on location, but they didn't really have as big of a no, budget as budget. like they didn't have the the Annabelle budget and the previous Conjuring budget. Even, even though people think they did, it's like. They actually did it because I guess I don't know if they were kind of if on how it was going to do it. And it wound up being one of the better ones yeah. aside from the first one, but yeah, it wound I up being it. solid. But yeah, but it, it was it was it was great, man. Um, and no, you know, and again, Paul Wilson. say what? I, I said not because of Paul Wilson. 
Oh, no, no, no. No, no he's no. he's a really good friend of mine. I fucking love that man. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, it, it wasn't a bad experience. I'm not saying yeah. that. I'm just saying, like, it no, was... No, Sorry. It was... Yeah, it was cool, man. It was, <laughs> it was, it was funny because uh, when I, I talked to Chris um, last week the other day and... Last week the other day. Yeah, it was like... Uh, <laughs> what was it, Thursday? <laughs> Wednesday or Thursday I reached out to you him. You sound like a late night show. Coming last show, week the other day. And he said, send me a link to your show. And I sent him the Paul Wilson show. I'm like, oh, well, nice. he was on The Conjuring and Chris was on The Conjuring, yeah. so maybe right. that'll... Yeah. Cry yeah. and, and, our... and Eugenie, <laughs> like I love Eugenie. She teaches down here in St. Pete. She's okay. brilliant. She's on now. She's on a Marvel show. I love nice. all that shit. I love watching people get successful because, right. like you said, man, association. I'm yeah. successful by association because I know these people and I've known them for right. ten years. So right. when I finally get that next billion dollars to make the movie, I can say, boop, 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 boop. "Yo, That's come it. play with me, motherfucker." That's it. You that's know? it. And that's and that's what everybody if you look at it, that's what everybody does. Like I tell people all the time, I'm like, you yeah. know, it's it, it's it's the proof is in the pudding, right? Like you look at you know, everybody's like, Oh, Evan Peters is perfect for this. I'm like, You think Ryan Murphy was gonna cast anybody else? Evan's literally been in all of Ryan's stuff. Yeah. I was like, You yeah. think he was really gonna look at anybody else? By association, when they got the budget and the clearance to do this, I'm pretty sure Evan knew about it way ahead of time. He knew it the and moment they were walking ready. out of the building. We got right. the budget, get ready. And then right. Peters and, is like, and, yeah, cool. And he's just like, it was cool, like <laughs> strippers, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, yeah. who knows, man, probably. I but, mean, all his success with American Horror Story, not yeah. to mention X-Men, I thought he's the best quick Yeah, he was the best. Yes, yes, I agree. I uh, agree. And, then, you know, WandaVision, didn't he have his, he had his. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, he's in yeah. WandaVision, man. So, like, I imagine he has, like, a nice place in L.A., which is probably, like, a 2-1. Uh yeah. Because they're expensive as fuck in LA. Though, really. Yes. You know, I saw, yeah, I've been looking at property, right? Because wife and I are in, in March, we want to move. And I don't want to live here anymore. I want to I want to go back out. I want to go out to LA. Right. Well, I have a business partner out there. He's got a studio in Silmar. And, nice. And uh, I've been looking at places like up in Palmdale. And, mm-hmm. you know, I really want to find something like Canoga Park. Mm-hmm. But, like, Palmdale is more affordable. But yesterday... And from a realtor, I got a little image, and it was just like the side of a mountain with some trees, and it was, it said five, three, eight hundred thousand. And I'm looking wow. at the picture, and I'm like, I don't see a house. <laughs> so I scroll through the pictures, and it's just like these big groups of trees. And then finally, in the trees, you see this giant house. With no windows or doors, the garage the door is like gone. House. It's been spray painted a million times. It looks like a meth house. And I was like, oh, they want eight hundred thousand yeah. dollars for this? Nah, nah. My little so you gotta be excited for a, a minute. Would be a right? dollar house in L.A., man. Like, right. Well, I I honestly just found a four three in Palmdale for like three hundred eighty nine thousand dollars, dude. So Leanne and I are jumping on that probably today. Right. Because it isn't here, man. The work's not here. It's not. It's not in Florida, bro. It, I mean, if you want to do some Hallmark in shit, that's okay. But again, yeah. association. Hallmark, right. the Hallmark, the Hallmark are all the same fucking people, dude. Right. You right. know? All those guys are the same people. They come here to make a Hallmark movie. They're flying in their AD from L.A. because they're not going to fucking deal with somebody from here. And that's what <laughs> they do. You know? Atlanta's the same way. Bro, Atlanta's the same yeah. way. Atlanta's the same way. If you look at Atlanta, man, because people got, you know, and I'll say this real quickly, like people, people don't read the stuff. I tell people, I'm like, man, listen, you know, part of your job as being in this industry is understanding the business aspect. It's called show business for a reason. It's called entertainment industry for a reason. Right. I'm like, even more so nowadays, it's more business than, than the craft. So I tell yeah, people, I'm show. like, read, read this stuff through SAG, like SAG has it. Even the local filmmaking commissions will have it. They're like, oh, the incentives. I'm like, the incentives don't benefit you as an actor unless you're background i'm like so if you want to work background all day cool because they have to hire a certain percentage or right. a certain amount of background but i'm like as far as co-stars guest stars i'm like that doesn't benefit us we we, we get shit. nothing for that so it why do you think sign in actors from as la a producer, yeah it benefits you if you went to make a movie in new mexico right right you're probably going to bring your own dp yes i'm not going to hire from mexico so right. already you're losing part of your incentive Right. You're probably going to bring in an actor you know, a buddy or a friend or two. Mm-hmm. You're going to fly in there with you. So you're right. still losing more incentive. Right. 
you know, that when people think about incentives, they're not really for uh, us. It's for the producers and investors producers, yes. to make their money back when it comes mainly to post right. and that kind of shit because that's where you'll make all your money back when you right. hire a post house in the place you're shooting or an right. editor, you know, uh, generally people already have their editors because they've worked with them a million right. times. Yeah. So it's like – right. But yeah, it's like, you know, at, as far as from the actor in, I'm like, you, you're not, you still got to fight for it, man. And I said, you know, there's more opportunity. There's more people in LA, but there's, there's more opportunity to, to get, you know, if you're putting in the work to get that role, like Atlanta, I tell people it's a good starting point. Like, you know, to get those co-stars and stuff like that. Listen, it's great. But as you said, by association, if your resume keeps being co-star, 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 that's all they're going to keep calling you in yeah. for. And you don't have the ability to grow to get to that guest star, get that recurring, or get that series regular because they're bringing them in from L.A. Right. So it's like you still got to go to L.A. or New York, you know, yeah, it's at all, one point in time. Yeah. My, Roy, my partner, has been in, in L.A. his whole life, 30, 30 years, 40 years, 300 movies. And he go, he told me yesterday, he goes, I'm telling you, it's L.A., L.A., L.A. It will always right. be L.A. It will be L.A. Yes. Everyone tries to go to Atlanta or they try mm -hmm. to go to New Mexico, mm -hmm. but it's all based out of L.A. Yes. If still California falls into the ocean. Right. It's going to be L.A. because that's where all the major studios are, and they're not going to move a $500 million studio to nope. fucking the Midwest somewhere. Nope. So he's not wrong, man, and, and he's been not. there his whole life, and he's worked on over 300 movies. So he knows what right. the fuck he's talking about. Right. So right. I'm out. I gotta go. I gotta get there because right. I need to work more. Right. And and be clear and be clear for everybody listening. If you're starting as a actor or director or whatever, understand what Joe and I are saying, or at least definitely what what I'm saying. It's okay if you're starting out. Yes, start in your area. Go to the closest near hub, which would be yep. Atlanta. That's cool. But when you start getting that ten year, you know, ten years, twelve years, fifteen years, twenty, you start getting that in. If you don't go to L.A., then this is not going to turn into a right. career, it's a viable good. career. For right. You. You're yeah. going to be you're not even going to be living check to check because unless you're bagging national commercials, you know, like you said, unless you're bagging those every six months, you can't live. If off you're of lucky, that. if you're lucky, because if you're lucky, yeah, you got to fight between Miami, Orlando. Right. You know, for Sample. those for those commercials, which are heavy right. commercial uh, area locations. I mean, Miami is probably the number one commercial spot in the world. Right. They shoot every fucking thing down there. Man. Right. Everything right. from Lamborghini right. to Gucci. Right. You know, unless right. you're not on some fucking island somewhere or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But, you know. <laughs> right. Right. And that goes all the way to like photo shoots with models. It's the number one model capital in the world, Miami. Yep. Yep. And so it's you know, you just you just take your wins where you could get them, man. Like I said, I'm grateful for Dom right now. And I already know it's gonna open up some doors because I've had, you know, I've had people you know, reach out to me that whose work I respect, directors, producers, writers, <clears throat> reach out to me on Twitter. Like, I'm watching the show, yeah. and I just realized that was you. Great job. And then people that I've not even worked with that know me through, again, association. Yeah. You know, they'll see somebody tweet me, and they're like, hey, man, you know, I saw you worked with such and such. You know, hey, good shit on Dahmer, man. That's yeah. a good show, man. Good. Like, good stuff. And so, you know, I know, like, you got to stay on the gravy train and, and kind of milk that, but – I'm excited to see what. Man, I've been floating on the Stranger Things for like five years now. There you go. There you go, man. I don't know if it's been you got five to years. because it's, it's like hot. Years. Years. Why wouldn't you? Why yeah. Why wouldn't and you? I, and I don't. I don't have to do it. People do it for me. I don't. I don't. Exactly. Care. I don't need to do. It. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's in Stranger Things. I was like, yeah, like four years ago. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey. was already typecast. Yeah. <laughs> a fat scientist. Hey. Big yeah. glasses. <laughs> but yeah. that show, listen, man, that show is the show is hot, man. At the end yeah. of the day, and the it, show's it, hot. It 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 has opened some doors for me. It it, mm -hmm. it allowed me to get a manager right. uh, out of LA, you know, which shooks me up with a bunch of conventions. It's really opened mm -hmm. a convention door for me. Uh you know, but and now I'm starting to see that like now it's starting to pay off because mm -hmm. it's it's allowing me the real is allowing me to get auditions, which is allowing right. me to get further into the career. Right. Right. You know, I mean, it's not like I stepped off of Stranger Things and people were like, "Oh my God, come over here and play with us." It's like you know, it's like it was a little slow burn there for a minute. Right. But, right. You know, right. Sometimes you got to develop, anyways. You like the comedy or the drama better? 
I'm a comedy dude, man, and that's the sucky dude, part. You're man. Episode of Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, like that's I'm so a comedy, funny. and I, that's the thing. It's like I don't mind being the straight guy or you know the the punchline or the guy that's coming in doing the comedy, man. Like I I I am okay with that. I enjoy comedy because to me, comedy is is really where you play with the other actors. And again, I'm sure you know Joe knows that yeah, it's from giving. his background. Yeah, you you actually yeah. you gotta play, you gotta listen and you gotta play with the other actor. Drama, you you still gotta pay attention to the other actor, but it's kind of like you know, I mean, as long as I hit my line, cool. Depending on the show, comedy, like if you guys aren't playing together, it don't work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Timing's off or the chemistry exactly. is right. Right, but I don't get I don't get asked to do, which is crazy because like that Atlanta scene will go by and 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 people keep sharing that and sharing that and it's like all right, cool. And I'll get like comedy auditions here and there, and they'll like me. They're like, oh, but then they wind up going with like an influencer, which is cool. Or they'll go with like an actual like a stand up or something, exactly. which is like, all right, whatever, cool. Because again, they look at my resume and go, yeah, but all your shit's drama. So yeah, you know, I'm like, guys, I like comedy. It's cool, and I rarely, I rarely get the chance to do it. And that's why I like this new manager. He's like, yeah, man, we're gonna, we're gonna try to get you some comedy stuff because you know, I see you have the training, I see you have the background, like. Why don't you? And he thought the same thing. He was like, "Why do you turn it down?" I was like, "I don't. That's the thing. I don't get that shit. Like, I literally, yeah. It comes once every every thirty auditions. I might get a comedy thing, but the other twenty nine. Uh, I don't want to do drama. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Man, I just don't, man. I I don't want to. I I want to like. I'm trying to build myself up as like a horror dude. Anyways, right. you know, right. horror filmmaker and. <clears throat> But anyways, I'll take whatever I can get. But right, I really right. don't want to do drama because I'm the comedian. I'm the right. I'm the butt. I'm the I am the joke when you know right. I'm the dude. That, you right. know, I'm the guy who gets the spaghetti spilled on him and he's like, oh no, no a pocket hose. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I can see. I can see it, man. Oh yeah. Nice. Right. Well, I did a pocket hose commercial. <laughs> That's how I had to be stupid. My guy didn't know how to wheel up a fucking hose apparently <laughs> they're like you don't know how to use a hose i was like a garden hose they're like yeah you don't know how to wheel the, the thing i was like it's a crank you just turn it he's like no but you don't know how to you need you don't know how to do it and then you pull out the pocket hose. i was like this is i'm being paid 250 to do this <laughs> hey, listen. 250. yeah listen and, now you're no and i never you can't crank and i hose. can't find the commercial anywhere that's Nowhere. the worst so part. It was a terrible idea. No, it went out. The commercial <laughs> aired. I just can't find it, and they've never sent it to me. So right. I can't even put it in my. And it's old now. It's like fucking seven years. That's old. the worst part when you don't, you don't, you know, you don't get that stuff, man. That's yeah. that's yeah. the worst part about it. But you know, I mean, it it happens, man. It happens. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, you know, I I appreciate the the support always that I that I get when word comes out. And I appreciate you, Chris, for reaching out, man. I'm yeah, glad right. that you guys did. I mean, Dude, I, I see you popping up everywhere, man. I'm hoping I'm I get to awesome. to come back and, and spend more time with you guys when I when I have a little bit more time. I'm Absolutely. like, you know, I gotta run and get this other appointment going. But welcome anytime. Um, yeah, yeah thank man, you, sir. like for sure, for sure. And 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 you guys keep kicking ass, man, and, and doing your thing. I mean, I, I I'm bad about social media. I need to be better on that. But I like same thing with Joe. I see people and I'll shout them out. But I'm like, I hate being on because yeah, I don't know. Bad. Yeah, so I'm not an ridiculous. influencer, which is ridiculous to me that that's a thing <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I'm like, yeah, okay, I guess that's if that's what you want guys <laughs> yeah. to do, cool, but that's not me. So. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate so you coming on. The I show. don't have the ass to be an influencer. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's right there. <laughs> right. Thank you for joining that's us right uh, this week. Um, I appreciate you coming out and uh, yeah. joining us this week. Yeah, thank Chris. You. Thank you. Watch hey, him man, on Dahmer, the new series on Netflix. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, yeah man. man. Thank you. And uh, Thank you. hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll we'll catch up soon. And uh, best of luck on on the move to LA, man. I hope you yeah. snatch that that property up because it don't sound like it's gonna be there longer. It that probably price. won't be. It'll be gone. Probably, right. it's probably gone already. <laughs> <laughs> so the time I looked at it and looked at my wife, like, babe, look at oh, it's sold. All right, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. All right, man. Thank you, sir. Right, Chris. Thank, Thank you. Be you. Yeah. Right, yeah. Welcome back to the show. Uh, I'm your host. No, you're not. Kinda. I'm a co-host. Yeah. One of three. Oh, okay. <laughs> now who's demoted? So yeah. dramatic. You guys are a little dramatic this morning. Like, yeah. I, I don't know what's going on. He immediately here. said, when I said I'm your host, he's like, no, you're not. I'm dramatic. 
weird. He chopped that shit off like a samurai. Huzza! Huzza Kaba! So you said you had things to talk about. What do you have? Yeah, to dude. About? Well, okay. So I, I, I'm I making a point to watch. I thought uh, you were going to say making a porno. That's I'm making I'm a porno. <laughs> I've been shooting in your bathroom for weeks. Uh, no, I'm watching. Um, I'm going to watch 31 horror movies. I never do that because I think it's stupid. Okay. But I'm so far, far behind. This is the fourth. Have I know. Started? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm so far forward. behind, you know, in movies in general that I was like, well, now's a good time to catch up. And yeah, kinda... but all you're going to watch is all the old shit that you've seen already, right? No, I'm watching new you're shit. You're watching all new stuff. Really? That's what you should do. No, watch something yeah, you've never seen before. I have been. Settle the fuck down. I have been. Jesus Christ. Fuck, well, let's man. Hear it. All right. Your list. I started with my best friend's exorcism. Oh, I watched that the other night. I thought it was that great. Was pretty it funny, was cute, man. man. I, thought it really it, I thought it could have been way better. It could have been way better. It needed it more comedy, and, and but I liked it. I thought it was cute. Yeah. Then I watched a thing called Cursed. It was really cool about these uh, werewolf the teeth. Werewolf, these, you know, yeah, these gypsies. Yeah, yeah, that was, a that was fucking dope. That was a good episode. Uh, then I watched Conjuring 3. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure you saw that. <laughs> I've seen it like three times. Um, and then I watched... Uh, Studio Six 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 with the Foo Fighters. I haven't yeah. seen that yet. How was that? It, I liked it. I thought it was funny. It could have yeah. been. It was funnier. definitely funny. It's hard watching them act. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I heard they weren't very good actors. No, they're not. But it's funny because it's though. the Foo Fighters, and right. I love the Foo Fighters. Good soundtrack. Yeah. Good great soundtrack. soundtrack. Yeah. The whole plot was great. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I, I like you know the music and shit, and I like it. they make fun of themselves. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh. And they clearly have a great chemistry. Oh, yeah. Well, they've been together for, what, 30 years? Yeah. Um, the, that's it so far. So that's five, and it's only day four. Hmm. So I'm ahead of the game. So what you got on the top tonight? Uh, to Do you di- have them all written out? No. See, I did that last year. I made a list of everything. What night no, I'm with. not sure what, uh, I don't, I'm not I sure what I want to watch. There's well, a do- comes out does a documentary days, right? count as a movie? Depends what documentary. The one about Robert the Doll with Sarah Robert, French. It just sure. came out today yeah. on Discovery. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm a, that's up next. I actually started watching this morning only because I forgot my daughter was still home and hadn't left for school yet. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, I can't watch this. So we're going to see Smile tomorrow. Oh, nice. Have you seen the freaking, all the yeah. shit they've been doing? It's yeah. so funny, dude. That just means to me that the movie's going to be bad. Actually, I've heard a lot of good things. Sean even saw it yes, um, over the weekend. Oh, Did you like it? Is that Sean Donahue, yeah, the, the foremost uh, critic forte of <laughs> horror in all of Florida? Well, we don't ever agree on shit. So, yeah. We, uh, yeah. He said he loved it. I said, I uh, I, there's a bunch of horror films out that I'm going to see. I probably should start writing them down. See X. That's on my list to see Pearl. X and Pearl. Oh, I Pearl. saw Nope as well. Nope. What did you think of Nope? Uh, I thought it was great. I thought it could have been better. Yeah. I I was it like, like it's it was getting like, so much hate. It feels it's like it was lacking so something. Hate. Like I don't. Uh, a uh, a real monster. Well, I think no, because I like the whole idea of the, the UFO. I like that whole idea. What I was trying to figure out throughout the thing was like, okay, it moved. The pacing wasn't bad, but I don't think it – I think it should have moved a little faster. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It was okay. It just – I was like, oh, all right. That's cool. They won. They beat it. That's great. You know? I thought the best part of the movie, of the whole movie was the freaking monkey. I didn't understand that. Why was that in there? The just the flashback to the – There's a whole story about it. I know. I know. But, like, that's going to be another movie. Uh, yeah, that's what I was hoping. They're going to turn that – show thing into a movie. Right, they should. Uh, but I don't know why that was even in the movie. You could have cut all that out of the movie and never would have known. Right. It, uh, Stephen Young's character could have just been a cowboy who does shows. Right. Like, why does it have to be a whole backstory about some sitcom from the 80s about some monkey who rips off that girl's face? Right. Like, so, that went nowhere. Maybe he's putting seeds for other things. Well, for sure yeah. he is. Yeah. Well, but, you know, I don't know. I was like, eh, all right. Shark bait. Watch the movie called Shark Bait. Shark Bait. Hmm. New shark movie out. Did you watch the new Hocus Pocus? I did not, but it has been playing nonstop in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
You watched it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, well, because... I know the first, the first one... Because the first one came out in 93. I'm well, the first one is amazing, and my yeah. wife and my daughters love it. My daughters love the second one. You can't even say the second one is a money grab, because they didn't release it in theaters. So... Yeah. It was basically a... I want to say... Was just it as bad as Coming it. to America 2? It, no. That was actually... I liked Coming uh, to America 2. You know what I no. could not stand? I don't even so know why bad. it exists. And I never thought I'd say this ever in my life. Okay. But the monsters is a pure fucking oh pile God. of shit. I didn't understand. I watched. Like, I don't know what's happening. I have of it, and I'm like, dude, it's like a mockery of. It's almost like Rob Zombie trying to make a kids show. Yeah. Did you watch the whole thing? I can't. no. I can't get through. I got through like twenty. Rob, I got up to like Nosferatu breakdancing in the alleyway, yeah. and I was like, "What are you doing?" Like, what is Nosferatu dating Lillian? I didn't understand. Yeah, I don't understand any of that shit. And I think it's just because he can do whatever he wants. He didn't have a script together. Right. He pitched them the Munsters idea. They fucking bought it. And, like, then oh, he had fuck. Go, and then he had to go write some fucking nonsense. Yeah. It's that fucking, basically yeah. Halloween 2 all over. And again. I see people <laughs> posting, oh, the Munsters were so good. And I'm like... Did you watch the it right wa- Munsters? Like, it you watch wasn't the TV good show? and it wasn't nostalgic. No. Adam's family is nostalgic. That's least what I was hoping. I was hoping yeah. for it to be nostalgic. And it just wasn't. Yeah. Adam's, it was just Adam's like family a bunch of weird took shit. itself seriously. The Munsters took acid. Right. <laughs> and that's what happened. I just can't stand anything Rob Zombie does. Yeah. I, I don't. I mean, I, he's hit or miss with me, man. Like, I like some of the stuff. The only thing he hit on me for me was Halloween. That was it. One. I like. I like Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. I hate all that shit. I didn't like... I actually hate Rob Zombie. I didn't director. like 31. I didn't I like, like, you know where I like Rob Zombie? Like in White Zombie. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Just fucking play some music, yeah. bro, because you're really good at that. Yeah. You're not good at whatever the fuck the Monsters is. He's great in Cosmos. Please stop it. And I love I love I mean, Dan Roebuck. Dan yeah. Roebuck was yeah, in it. Yeah. yeah. And I thought he looked great as Grandpa Monster, but what they did with... Uh, Herman and what they did with Lillian. I didn't even get to Herman. I didn't even see him. I didn't even get to him either. He wasn't the, even made yet. After they were... Wait, wait, wait. What? He's, he's not in the beginning. Of, he's not... They're he's, dating. He's like, Lily's dating. Dating Nosferatu. And, she's yeah. on a date with him. Is it a prequel? And I'm just like, yeah, who knows? What is happening here? Like, I didn't get it. And then that whole shit at the beginning with the guys robbing the grave. Like, I didn't understand. Yeah, I don't understand. know. Yeah, well, that was part of Herman. And They're like, building Herman. Oh, is that what they were doing? And then he finally comes to life, and she falls in love with him. Uh, you didn't see that part? I didn't get where to that he part. Sits oh, up, the prequel? Dude, he it. sits up and cuts to Lillian, and there's all these hearts behind her. I'm telling you, Lillian was on the date it with Nosferatu. Looked, and it I'm looked like, like a fucking... I can't do it, this it, you know what it looked like? He shot the movie with Instagram filters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because it's I, hearts I guess, and shit, rainbows. Well, apparently he wanted to shoot it in black and white, and Netflix wouldn't let him. So That's what it needed it to be crazy done. crazy color. Netflix is going to kick themselves because what well, Werewolf by Night is going to be really good. Yeah. In black I agree. That shit looks badass. Yeah. Eugenie Bondurant. Can't yeah, wait. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, um, that's but, coming up soon, isn't it? What? I don't know. Was it over Werewolf there? by Night? Uh, yeah. Oh, I was trying to see the date. The 20th? Yeah. I don't know, man. I know Halloween ends, or ends comes on, on the 14th. I can't wait for that. I know that they're playing Hocus Pocus at the Tampa Theater. I'm going to take my daughter to go see it. Because she's never been to the Tampa yeah. Theater, and it's fucking amazing to go there. Yeah. What's well, Tampa Theater, three twelve Franklin Street, Tampa, Florida. I think they fucked up the second one. That's all I'm gonna say. The second Hocus Pocus. Yeah. I, I, like I said, it was just Dude, for the sequels nostalgia. are just like that's what they did for Coming to America too. Yeah. It was just like they brought out all the same, they recycled all the shit that was in the first one yeah. that wasn't as and, fun and did not have the budget I'm either. Like, why are you no doing budget this? Why would you one? make this movie? Yeah. I know you said you liked it. I I hated it. Coming to America the Bunny was Coming to so America too? Yes. I loved it. The only thing I had a little problem with was the lion thing, but everything else was hysterical. Like I, said, I, I, I laughed. The like, lack of budget just showed. Old. The lack of budget showed. And it was not. And I love Coming like, to America. Oh, uh, yeah. That's absolutely. my favorite comedy. Like, but that movie was like on like a whole big spectrum. The second one was just like shot in the warehouse. Yeah, they <laughs> shot it in one location. Yeah. I hated the plot. I didn't. I don't know. And all the recycled you remember, shit. You remember the castle or the mansion that they had in the first one? Yeah. Did you see the second one? It was like yeah, it was like nothing. Like, it was like I, I couldn't say it. I could. I was like, why? Like, well, I mean, I what love do you think about? Uh, I love Eddie Murphy. I love Arsenio Hall. Beverly Hills Cop Five is coming. 
Yeah. Four? Yeah. And, I, and I'm worried that that's Four or five? Up. I hope they don't mess that up. No. This has to be four. 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 Yeah. It's got to be good. It better be good. Oh, it it has, has to be as good as the first one. It needs over-the-top action. But here's the thing. Is Eddie Murphy, like, no. still good? Well, I mean, I like, still I love haven't Eddie seen, Murphy. What's the last movie he was in that was, like, wow, that was really funny. Or, that was really good. Bowfinger? I can't even remember. Bowfinger? That was, like, wow. 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know, man. I he mean, that just... type of comedy. Not Wasn't like, he just in it's like, not like kids comedy? Some, I mean, like he was in some movie of, like in all makeup. Um, I mean, he's in the uh, Doctor Dolomite, the Nutty Professor. Dolomite's oh, yeah, fucking amazing. Dolomite. I haven't yeah. seen that yet. I heard it was we really did. good. It's amazing, man. Yeah, I heard it was really good. Mr. Church, I might watch. <clears throat> it's got good ratings. Um, uh, yeah, no, 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 nothing good. <laughs> Nineties. He hasn't done anything good since the nineties. Hopefully, yeah. this is a. Well, I need revival. to see Dol- Dolomite and I need to see Mr. Church. Yeah, I need to see Dolomite. And I haven't heard of that other one. Dolomite's awesome, man. What the hell? The, the Beverly Hills Cop. What? What? Let me see that. What's that saying? What? It says twenty thirteen. Beverly Hills Cop. TV or no, this is Beverly Hills Cop. I don't know with BJ Britt. I have no idea. Barry Sonnefeld. Somebody stole the name and made some bullshit. No, Barry he's, Sonnefeld, he's dude. It. He's tagging it. I don't. Well, maybe they were gonna make it in 2014 and didn't, or 13, or just unreleased it. No, so didn't release it back then. Oh, this is 2013. You're right. Yeah. Who knows? Never heard of it. Yeah. But why is Be- why is I don't know Beverly Hills Cop not on his? That is that's why he pulled it from. Right, but that's fucking it's 2013. Almost ten years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Where's the? They're doing a new one. Yeah, it's not even on there. Interesting. Hmm. He probably hasn't signed on yet. That's probably what it is. Do you know that he's done 935 episodes of Saturday Night Live? No. Well, that was what? That doesn't... I can't do that. Well, they shoot one every... No, they can't be right. Definitely can't be right. It says 935 episodes. From 1975 on. Oh, Saturday Night Live has 935. Yeah. He's been on 66 episodes. That's, that makes sense. Yes. God damn, dude. Anyway. Listen to me. Your Halloween thing is a movie called Harpoon. Okay, I think I've watched. Seen, yeah. it. You seen it? Uh, no, but I think I've seen it's the on, uh, thing. It's on Prime. I think it's on Prime. It's fucking awesome. Okay, like, you gotta watch it. That movie's really badass. Okay. Harpoon. Harpoon. What's it on? I think it's on Prime. It's on Tubi. Hmm. It's on Plex. But if you want it without ads, it's on Prime. Hmm. Badass movie. What? October is like one of my favorite months for all the Halloween stuff. Yeah. Um, I love the horror movies that come out. Yeah, they see a whole bunch of releases. They just really smile and spirit Halloween yeah. on the same day. Halloween. Yeah. So it's going to be a, a good month, I think. Like, I'm really curious what Halloween Kill is going to be. You know, yeah, here. I think it's going to be full of Jamie Lee Curtis, and that's not a good thing. Mm, we'll see. Hopefully there's a lot of kills. They up the, hopefully they up the body count. Even though the last one was fucking brutal, man. yeah, but they skewed the body count because the, the end of the movie because he was just killed all the like uh, fifteen people at, at the end of the movie, so the kill count got a little skewed. What is this for? Halloween. Halloween. Oh, the new one, Halloween Kills. Yeah, we watched some of that. I didn't watch all of it. Uh, I got up to he was coming into the hospital, I think, and is that? Uh, Anthony Michael Hall? Yep. Yeah. He just looks better with age. Right. He just keeps like looking better. Because he always looked like a little He always looked like a kid. kid. A yeah. skinny little yeah. fuck. Yeah, he Even was. in uh what was that movie? Out of bounds. Remember that movie? Like yeah. I couldn't take him seriously because I'm like, this is the kid from he, Weird Science. He looks so much more yeah. mature and yeah. so much like defined. Like he looks Yeah. Like, yeah, but I mean that could be makeup too. Yeah. But he was the sixteen candles kid and yeah. the weird science kid. Yep. And he couldn't shake Oh, it. Uh, Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club. Yep. That, that's my all-time favorite movie. Breakfast Club? Really? Yeah. 
all time favorite movie. Um, because I think it literally described all like the representation of me in high school. Because I, I was a goth, I was an athlete, I was fucking smoking a lot of weed. Do you guys know a, like, good, everything, everything. a movie like, called Catherine Called Birdie? No. Catherine Called Birdie? No. Yeah. No. All right, it's a movie. Playing at the Tampa Theater. All right, so Wednesday, October 12th. At the Tampa Theater, they got the thing. What? Okay. Hmm. Cool. I'm gonna be October fourteenth. The Hocus thing. Pocus. Yeah. Suspiria on the fourteenth. Nice. The original or the remake? Original. I haven't seen the remake. Have you seen the remake yet? No. It actually looks pretty good. I'm not a, I'm not a big Suspiria fan, but. Rocky Horror know, Picture there's... Show October fifteenth. Friday the thirteenth. October sixteenth. Original. Yep. Psycho. Nice. Like X on the 16th. Nice. House in, with a clock in its walls. Mm-hmm. The Shining. Nice. On the 17th. Oh, those are all the classics. Theater of Blood. Oh, they can do the blob. What's it cost to get in there? <clears throat> Pet Cemetery on the 20th. Josh Gates Live October 21st. You know who that is. And if you don't, you guys fucking suck. Yeah, I see. Expedition Unknown. Destination Truth. No, not a ten seasons apiece, both the shows. This guy's been on Discovery Channel for like thirty years. Oh, I haven't Discovery heard Channel. Discovery Channel in like ten years. So. Clerks three, October twenty third. I'm going to that. You're going to that. You're going to go to that, but you don't know who Josh Gates is. No, I'm saying I'm going Learn to that. Learn some fucking shit. I want to see Clerks three. <laughs> Phantasmagoria thirteen. Yeah. Whatever the fuck that is. Dead and buried on the twenty fourth. Mm. Uh, Beats comes at midnight. We talked to those guys yeah. until the twenty fifth. Evening with Ghost Brothers. We talked to the Beast that comes at midnight, guys? Didn't we? No. Oh. We actually oh. should have one of those guys on the show. I'll reach out to uh, The Adams Chris Family Jackson. cartoon, 29th. This cartoon's hysterical. I don't know if you've seen it. The, which one? The original? Adams Family cartoon. No. I Did you see the last one? Part two? Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was really funny, man. Haunted Mansion, the 29th. Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. Ghostbusters on the 29th. Frighteners on the 29th. I like Frighteners. That seems like a fun day to go, actually. Watch all those movies. Hmm. La Casa de la Fin de los Tienemiertos. Good try. That's what it says, dude. I, I know what it says, but... Uh, <laughs> Halloween on October 31st. Close. The original? Oh, they're playing yeah. at uh, Regal. They're having uh, Dawn of the Dead 3D, the original. It's called Nightmare on Franklin Street, if you're local it's to Tampa. the weekend of Halloween. Nice. They won't go see that. Well, if you're in Tampa or the Tampa surrounding areas, please check those out because that's yeah, it's fun. Tampa Theater is a old theater from the 1800s, still sitting in Tampa. Uh, it has a ghost tour every day, I think. It's a huge it's haunted. The Tampa Theater haunted. I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I've I didn't go there. I went with the St. Pete Times to the. Um, Cuban Club. If it's an old building, does that just automatically make it haunted? No, no I think like gangsters <laughs> got to die in there and shit. Or a cowboy. People killed them. Gangsters or a cowboy have to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a Native American burial ground. <laughs> yeah, or a Native American burial ground. Dude, I, I met my dad at Carabas on Sunday. For That's dinner. weird. For the first time? No. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I met with him. It's a weird place later. to meet. And, uh, Where do you want to meet, Dad? Carabas? He pulls out this paper out of his pocket and it's so he believes that the reason why no hurricanes hit us is because there's like these Indian burial grounds that are protecting us. I'm like, you do realize there's Indian burial grounds all over Florida, right? Not, not like in, just not like in Seminole. Here. Not just here. Not like in Seminole. All over. Really? It's a real thing. So you think that's why too? No. Why we don't have any hurricanes? No, I don't think it. I believe it. Oh, you do? Yeah. I didn't know about this till Leanne told me. And then we looked it up, and that's all we did for like eight hours. Researched this whole crazy mess. I'm, I'm judging him just a little bit. bit. That's fine with me. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> At least I have something to believe in. I'm going to get you a tinfoil hat and just... Uh... It's not aliens, dude. It's <laughs> seminal fucking Indians. They're buried in the ground. Well, hey, when I, I want, when I recommended a movie about Native American burial grounds, you guys nixed it, and I think that would, would make a lot of sense, especially here. I don't know what you're talking about. What? What? Camp Hackahoe. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude, listen. Sometimes I'm high during this show, and I don't remember things <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> oh, 
like but I said, smack a hoe or whack a hoe. Whack a hoe. I agree needs to be made. I agree. I've been saying this. Now I understand where I was saying we can't do Indians because it's politically incorrect. I see. Now I remember the whole conversation. Yeah. Okay. But it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Great name. This motherfucker yeah. is like yeah. no Indian. Why is it got to be Indian? Yeah. Well, I don't want to do a fucking Indian movie. Gonna... It's not about Indian. It's just about the curse of it. It doesn't get, you don't have to even describe it. You could just say, oh, it's been on some ancient burial ground. Like yeah. that's it, The only way it could work is if you had a character, the funny character, Indian character probably, Native would have to American. be. And they're the one, who, Native American, who says, man, this shit's like Camp Hackahoe. And that's where the name of the movie comes from, right. is this dude's, he calls it that. But then okay. we'll probably get protested by all the Native Americans. No, because we make the Native Americans the hero. Oh, okay. They're fighting some spirit thing. I came up with a good idea. If you want to hear it, I'll tell you about it. Sure, I think it's amazing. Uh, I think it's franchisable. I think that it could go for at least three, if not five, movies. You know, three or five. That's where they're at, unless you're Sharknado. Yeah. They're like a ten, right? Uh, I've never watched one of them. Are you kidding me? No. no. I've watched all of them. I guess. I Same with all of the Tremors. I like the Tremors. Yeah, they're cool, man. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Like the Giver? Remember the It's Giver? called... I, I don't know what to call it, honestly. I'm having a hard time with it because I like the name Brides of Cannibal Island. Okay. But that's not a franchisable name because it's not about the island. See, I don't, like the brides. I don't like Cannibal Island. Okay, so here's the plot. Anyways. Okay. Bachelorette Party. Rich bitches, CEOs, hot. I mean, we're talking hot, good-looking things in, in, in fucking, you know, nighttime attire, getting ready to go out. They're going to fly in to some place and have a good-ass fucking bachelorette party. The best friend's getting married, but crash. Now they're on an island or in a fucking swamp or wherever the fuck they are, and now they got to stay alive, and now they're going after I got it. They crash land in the swamp, and they have to fight swamp people billies, swamp billies. To stay alive, and it's in a like brides of Swamp hillbilly, Billy. hillbilly. So it's bridezillas meet hell have eyes. Hell More like eyes. deliverance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bridezillas meet hell have eyes. Perfect. That's actually because it's not going to be like the that's a horrible way to go. Deliverance, right? Right. Yeah. Right. But a horror right. comedy, not like you know the all the the right. six women who are there, they all survive, they win, they're the heroes. And then we do it again. It's almost like Hangover. But then the next movie is something else drastic happens to them. And now they got to fight these fucking things. You know, mutant snakes or some shit. Right. You know? What do you think? Where did Cannibal come in? Originally, they were going to crash land on an island that hadn't been charted yet. That's why they call it Cannibals. So I was going to call it Brides of Cannibal Island. But I don't like that. I I kind of just, I just told him with the idea right now of, on all female lead horror film franchise. Yeah. 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 Sellable. Sure. Especially if they're hot. Right. Challenge me. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, remember my sitcom I wrote? I'm what? thinking about turning that into a movie. Oh, what? Yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought about it. I'm up to like 160 what? pages. It's way easier to make a movie than a fucking series. Well, my, my series is only going to be 13 episodes, so that's why. Well, it's funny, because I was talking to Duncan the other day about my vampire movie I want to do, and he was like, that sounds like it would be a good series. So I'm like, hmm. Vampires are hot right now. So I started thinking, I'm like, yeah, how long would it take me to make a series? So if you made like 30-minute episodes, 10 episodes, that's a lot of hours. Yeah. Dude. I, it took me it's a like year five to hours. shoot South Central. It's a five-hour movie. And it's 13 episodes, and they're not even on 10 minutes. I think I can knock it out in eight days. Five episodes. Or five, like I said, I'm up to 150 10, minute episodes. Mine, so. That's what I was thinking about, just doing the movie. Because we just shot an hour and 40-minute movie in three days, which is insane. So 
So I think we can do it. But I would need more money. I would need of course. to put like six, six, seven grand into well, it. Well, you need to do a lot for series. And I just don't think. You'd have to do like. I would never make my money back. <clears throat> would. That's the problem. Like, I don't want to up my ante because I know I won't make the money back. Yeah. And I don't want to be in the hole. So I'll that's the problem. The I'm very interested to see what the Death Blow Indiegogo does because it's so different from everything else that yeah. we've done. And that's what our fans want. Janowski hit his goal with his Kickstarter. Yeah, I saw that. It's like forty eight hundred dollars or some shit. Forty nine, I think it is. Not for a comic book though. Yeah. Different. See, you got to think crowd. about it. You're basically doing three movies. That's we basically you got the budget for. Cause right. It's thirty minute episodes, ten episodes. Yeah. First, I was thinking, all right, forty five. Ten minute minutes. episodes, thirty episodes. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. That'd yeah. be three episodes. <laughs> so I've been thinking about. <laughs> Which way to go? I don't know. You math wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I'm and then it's like I graduated high school. And so the thing is, like, you can, like, you make your movie, you can upload it to whatever they put it on Tubi and yeah. Amazon. Is that worth the band? Is that worth it? Because I know so firsthand like, what's happening right now. I got a friend of mine trying to make a movie. He's already got four hundred thousand in the bank. He talked to Tubi. They were going to give him four hundred thousand uh, on the back end. For fifty percent of the money up front, so they wanted to be wanted him to pay them two hundred thousand dollars to make his movie. Why would anybody do that? To put it on Tubi? That's what Tubi's doing apparently. They're charging filmmakers to put it up on Tubi. Hmm. So I don't know if you can like. So if I say we use Film Hub or whatever, we upload to Film Hub. Yeah. Right. They put it. They shop it to all those apps or whatever, and you get on so many apps or whatever. And then you get paid per quarter. Can you do that with a series? Like, do they do that? Um, or is it, it just movies? It would be limited. To like, are there series it could be on like Tubi? Netflix, Amazon, or do you be limited on a couple things? Like, are there series on Tubi? I don't know. I don't have Everybody to. has Tubi. It's a free to. thing. I don't, I don't watch. Go on Tubi. There's nothing on Tubi that I want to watch. There's a lot of stuff on Tubi. Sure well, not that. Anyway, do they? Do they, I don't even know if they have series. Can you get a series on Prime? Yeah. You can? Yeah. I, I know a couple people who have series on Prime. Hmm. I just think that's it's. I don't know if that's the right move for this. I mean, just add it to your repertoire. I got to come up with a plot first, so that's the first thing. Yeah. But the way I'm designing it, it's like I said, it's like Veronica Mars type. Yeah. And that was a series. Yeah. So, and I started watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, like the Buffy. old ones, the just started. Uh, yeah, I never watched. I watched the I, movie. But I, I never owned watched. them. <laughs> I just, Dude, I watched it so much that like my life schedule around Buffy. Yeah, really? same. Yeah, yeah. I watched the first episode. I was kind of like, Ooh. it gets good. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Buffy. Yeah. The, they, they, they made one of the best episodes I've ever seen in television. Really? Yes. Are you talking about Hush? Yes. Yeah. It's, but it's what really season cool. was that? Four. Yeah, cool. Season four. The episode so, called uh, Hush. When you get to that, you, do I need you, to watch it's like, all it's like the a other horror ones? movie. It's like a horror movie. Do I need to watch all the other ones? It's to Doug get to Jones, that? dude. It's yeah. Doug Jones is the gentleman. Yeah. Like if I just watch that episode, am I going to be completely lost? Uh, no. It's a standalone. Yeah, you could. I mean, you won't know all the characters. Yeah, there might be something in there with, with uh, Willow or something. Yeah. You'd be like, what? But it's kind of a standalone. Uh, it's a toss-up for me with that and Once More Kill. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We had the musical one. Yeah, that's fucking great. Yeah, too, that was man. cool. Too. But vampires are kind of making a little comeback. Yeah. Yeah. My only problem... It sounds like the, the the new Blade's like a disaster already. Yeah, didn't they shut production down? Well, they shut it down. Then they started again. The director quit. Marshall Ali's pissed at the script because it's not that great. And he just, I don't know, it just seems like a big disaster. I'm like, you know what? Why don't, they just, is all like, why don't they just take the original Blade and just like re-release it to the, all the millennials? Why don't you just cast Wesley Snipes as Blade? Too old. I mean, I like no, I like not. the casting. I like the Marishal Ali casting. But yeah. If it's not a good script or a fun movie, like who the fuck? Yeah, it's a show, isn't it? Well, it really depends on what direction they're trying to go in. Who gives a Blade shit about was Blade? A different. It was rated R. And it was definitely a different realm than where they're going with, because they put Blade at the end of Eternals. Right. Like you got a fucking Blade. Who the cares? Top, Blade has the top three opening scene of all time. Yeah. 
with the when they're in the club with yep. the bloodbath. Oh, dude. That's one of your top three opening scenes to any movie? Yeah. Name Please give me one. your other two. Name a better one. <laughs> I don't know. Striking Distance with Bruce Willis. Striking Distance. Friday the 13th. I don't remember that. The remake. Striking Distance has Friday like a... remake? Yeah, the opening. No, 2009? I, I love that opening. What's that the opening, opening is really good. Get out of your own building. What's the op- Oh, when they're finding the weed and shit? Yeah. Uh, Striking Distance has like an eight-minute car chase scene. It's fucking amazing. Dark Knight... Bank robber scene. I love that. Good scene. That's all right. Long. It's long, but it's fucking good. Mm. But, dude, that Blade I, I watched it the other day on YouTube, the Blade scene. I'm just like, yeah. dude, fucking so good. I mean, the rest so of the 09 stuff. But the opening, I love the opening. Let's see. When I first Another got my surround sound system, I would come home every day and just watch that opening scene of that. And when he throws that thing, the yeah. little batter, the, bat, the batter ring, the blade ring yeah. around, it, like, went all the Go way shit. the speakers. Yeah, uh, Ghost Ship's a pretty good opening. Yeah. I'll give you that. That's pretty good. Um, but that Blade scene, man, with the music and the fucking... Yeah. The whole crowd and the blood start pouring out of the sprinklers. Like, that shit was so awesome. My Bloody Valentine. It's like, what's the matter, baby? <sighs> and, then, and then what's badass about it is everybody's all bloody and shit. Yeah. And the guy falls on the ground and Blade's, like, the, you see his shoes and yeah. they pan up. And he's all clean, and everybody else is just all bloody and yeah. shit. And he just starts beating the shit, like, yeah. hacking everybody up. That's, Hack off. That's a great show. That's, <laughs> that's a good scene. Yeah. I but, can't think of any other good opening. I mean, I'm like. They're not many, right? Great. There's not many that are, like, Goonies memorable. Goonies has a pretty good opening scene. There's not a lot of memorable. The, card, the police opening. chase. Out of yeah. The, Goonies has got a pretty good opening scene. Yeah. Um, it's a whole opening credit sequence. Yeah. The only oh, thing I've thought about that is Martha Plimpton is bobbing for crabs. Her character goes into a bucket of water and comes up and she's holding a crab. Like she's oh. bobbing <laughs> for crabs. That makes no sense. Nope. Right. <laughs> nope. Now as an adult, you're like, what? Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Uh, let's see. What else is another good opening? I think I'm having like some sort of skin infection. Um... Detention. Did you ever see the opening scene of that? Uh, I've seen it. I don't remember the opening scene. Great opening scene. Great opening credits. Yeah. Like the credits were real creative, and the rest of the movie was absolute shit. Yeah. What's your favorite scene in any movie ever? My favorite scene of any movie ever. Yeah. I don't think it's possible to even oh equate that into a thing. Oh, there's some good ones. Yeah. The fucking car chasing a Ronin. Yeah. The bank robbery scene is tight and a heat. heat. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Children of Men, the whole one take. Where she gets scene. killed. Yeah, yeah. Julian Moore. Yep, love oh, that. No, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good shit. Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. With uh, the one scene with Pacino and uh, De Niro, um, I can't think of the movie right now, but. Um, that was heat. heat. That was the heat? Airplane, oh, airport. Oh, yeah. The, no, when they're sitting at the, the yeah, diner. Yeah, was the heat. Di- yeah. yeah. That, that scene was fucking. I also like the end at the at the airport when they're out in the airfield. Yeah. That but was I think great. that was my favorite scene. Yeah. It was good. It was good. Because they were like equals. And it was yeah. just like. like Yeah. Great character development, yeah. storytelling. Yeah. It's all beautiful, man. All yeah. beautiful. Um, oh, Scream opening sequence. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> I was like, best. wait, wait. I literally just watched all of them like, recently. Scenes, definitely up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that might have been one of the, one of the best. Well, it was scenes. shocking because yeah. Drew Barrymore was a huge star and at the time. It. She yeah. fucking <laughs> dies in the first five minutes. You're like, what? Yeah, yeah 96, she was big. That blew her career up, though, she said. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She said doing that little role blew her up. Again. Oh, Again. She was in fucking everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's in everything I like. Yeah. Santa Clarita Diet, you seen that? Yeah. I fucking love that show. Sure. It's over. They, they can't scream. They canceled it yeah. because Santa Clarita burnt down. No that. Nev Campbell, man. Why? She's not coming back? No, they didn't pay her what she wanted to make. Fuck her. She's like, I am this franchise. Like, yeah. I'm kind of like, are you? Where's Ghostface? The yeah, I don't have a costume of you, Nev Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what people see. Yeah, when you search Scream 
action figures. There's no Nev Campbell action figures. Right. Hated Panettiere <laughs> coming back. Yeah, I do like that. You think so? Yeah. Because that was my favorite one. Actually. She's part of the Nephilim or whatever. The what? The sex cult. Yeah, room. some sex cult. Really? She's a sex thing. cult. Yeah, yeah, she's in a sex cult. She didn't give a fuck about it. She don't care. Yeah. Yeah. They're, uh, it's I'm a big, like, like I don't care. it's basically like a big group of swingers, really, yeah. is like what, what is it mean, is. Is that really a cult? That's just... No, nah, I, I call that a Friday night. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, hey, I want to join. If you're gonna, if you're getting fucked, I'm yeah, going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm sure my wife and I could probably swing right into that. Yeah, but swing into. She's her. so hot. She's okay. No, she's. Hot. I mean, she's cute. Yeah, you know, I, I think like. You think Kate Dennings is hotter than her? Yes. The fuck out of yes. here! Wow. Yes. Love fuck out! I, I can't even yes. look at you right now. Yes, I know Kate Davison loves Kat Dennings. Like, I, dude, I can't, I can't even right now. On a scale of 1 to 10, I can't even. That's love just it. fucking really good. No, I love my wife. Okay. Kat Dennings is just cute and hot. Close second. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, Kat Dennings yeah. is a great, amazing actress. Next, you're going to tell me Miss McClarthy's not hot. All right. There's something wrong with this guy. Don't know. No, there's not. I know where there's ample opportunity when I see it. Yeah. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on Killer Collab Podcast. My name is Tony D. Tone Death from Florida. Joe Davidson, Chris Lato. Bigger lady, sit me up. (laughs) See you next week. Cat Dennings, this guy loves you. See ya.